Hello yogis! Welcome back! So today we're going to do a little bit of a different kind of class and this one is intended for kids. Kids yoga class. So my name is Kyla and it's nice to be here. Some of you I've met in person. Very exciting to be in a new format and this is? Sage. Okay, so Sage, how old are you? Eight. And what grade are you in? Second. Alright, so I often will start a kids yoga class asking a question and today I'm going to ask kind of the question that's on probably a lot of our minds. How do you feel about being home from school these days? Um, I feel sad that I can't see my friends but I feel good that I don't have to do as much work. Cool. So we would love to know how you feel when you're at home and you know, uh, <laughs> not in school these days. So if you want to leave it in the comments, we'll write you back and this could be one way of interacting. So part of our goal in these kids yoga classes is how can we interact without seeing each other? Can we do things over Skype? Can you play along with this video? Things like that. So to begin today, we're going to do a little bit of a meditation. Focus, a focus exercise. And Sage is going to be our bell ringer today. And when you hear the sound of the bell, let's take our hands all the way up into the sky and then start to bring them back down as the bell gets quieter. And then when you don't hear the bell anymore, take your hands down. So while you're doing this, maybe you can close your eyes. Are you ready to dig? Move this bell aside. And since for some of us this is our first yoga class, Sage and I are going to demonstrate a few of the basic yoga postures before we get underway. Actually, first let's do a little bit of a warm up. So let's rub our hands, make them nice and warm. And then we're just going to stretch our hands up overhead, taking a deep breath in. So fill your body with breath, stretch through your fingers, and then exhale, take your fingers all the way down. And we're going to bow. Really slow, all the way to your edge. Don't hurt yourself. And then we're going to roll back up. And take the hands up overhead and let's take our legs out nice and long. And so everybody is different when it comes to folding forward. We're going to take our hands down to our knees. And maybe that's as far as you can fold. Just take your head down. Maybe you can take your hands forward a little bit more. Oh, they just way down. But walk your hands forward if you can towards your feet. Maybe you can take hold of your toes and then bow down. But only... If it feels okay to your body, make sure that you're safe and comfortable. And take a deep breath. Feel your legs melting to the floor. How about one more breath here? And then we'll walk back up. And cross the legs back over. And let's rock forward and take the hands down in front. And step back into what we call table pose in yoga. So this is going to bring us to some of our first postures to introduce. When I look up to the sky like this, what's that called, Sage? Cow pose. Cow pose. So you can do a little moo here if you like, lifting into your heart. And then, Sage, when I press into my hands, drop my head, drop my tail, what's this called? This is called cat pose. Exactly. And you can do a little meow if you like. So we're going to inhale and exhale. And then inhale, warming up your spine and exhale. One more time, we'll inhale, lift. And then let's just find a nice neutral spine in the middle. And we're going to take a look like a dog that's going to bite its tail. We're going to take a look over our right shoulder like this. And then inhale back to center. 
and exhale over to the other side. Try to bite your tail on the other side. <laughs> side to <laughs> stretch. And then we're going to step our hands forward just a little bit. Tuck the toes under and lift the hips up. Paige, what do we call this posture? Downward dog. Exactly. Downward dog. So pressing into the hands, keep lifting into the hips, drop the head down. Ah, nice stretch. Feel your hands, feel your feet really connected. Let's take one foot up and back. So this is our three-legged dog. Sage is wagging his tail. <laughs> Get a little wiggle, opening that hip. Awesome. Then let's take the foot back down, other side. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> and then both feet down. So let's look forward toward the hands. Stepping one foot up. Awesome. Dropping that knee down. And so see if you can pull your front heel just under your front knee. So pull it forward a little bit. Excellent. Find your balance. Actually, you can take it back just a little bit more than that. You don't want it to be in front of your knee, just right under it. Okay, and then we're going to sweep the hands up overhead. Paige, do you remember what this one's called? Warrior one? I would usually call this dragon pose. You want to try it? Take your hands up overhead. Okay, okay see if you can take a breath along with us. We're going to take a deep inhale. And exhale. The hands all the way down. Let's tuck the toes under, lift the knee. Do you think you can do the challenge? What? One, two, three. Switching legs. We're going to take that other knee down, point the toes back. Back knee down, point the toes back. Inhale, take the hands up overhead. Dragon pose on this side. It can be tough to balance. You're going to bend into the front knee a little bit more. Deep breath in. And hands come down. Let's step back. Ready? Tucking the toes. Zoom. Plank position. So, Sage does this every morning in his second grade class. So he knows not to lower his hips way down to the mat, right? And you know not to take your hips up too high. Right in the middle. Nice straight line. Reaching forward through your crown. One more deep inhale. Yes? Um, also, I know some good advice. If you need to take a little break, you can put your knees down. Exactly. If this is too much for your arms and your elbows, take your knees right down. And then maybe you can go back up again when you have had a little rest. Okay, so from here, let's see if we can walk our feet up to our hands and hang over the legs. So this is called, do you know this one? Ragdoll. Exactly, ragdoll pose. Your legs are strong, your heels are connected to the floor, and your upper body just hangs. You can't even see Sage behind all of his hair there, but he is just hanging loose. And you can take a little shift side to side if you want. <laughs> and then we're going to roll our way up to stand. Let's roll, 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 roll. I'm going to meet the ceiling here. You can probably take your hands up overhead and stretch the ceiling. So we're going to stretch all the way up and take our toes together and lean over to one side. And guess what we're doing now? Banana pose. Banana pose. And then other side, banana pose. Woo, hey ceiling. We're going to be the ceiling. It has its limitations, but it's cool. Back to center. Now if we take one hand down to our hip, the other hand up, what do we call this? Giraffe pose. Giraffe pose, nibbling the leaves off the tops of the trees. Ooh, yeah, giraffe. And then other side, we're going to nibble all the way over here. Yep, nibbling, nibbling. Excellent. And let's see, while well, we're up on our feet, how about we learn tree pose? Who knows tree pose? Excellent, Sage. All right, hands come up. Pointing your fingers up to the sky, grounding through your foot, taking your knee out as much as you can. One, two, three. Ah, relax your tree. <laughs> other side, grounding to the other foot. Squeeze to both sides. We're going to take the hands up. Whoa, overhead. It's okay if you wiggle or fall. Just smile and come back. Just play with it. Imagine your tree roots growing down into the ground. Imagine your branches reaching for the sky. How about the warriors? Warrior three. Sage wants to start with the tricky one. We're going to take warrior three, also known as airplane pose, taking your hands alongside the body, taking your hips level, reaching back through that heel. And so if you have to have your feet, your toes just a little off the floor, that's fine. We're just working on our balance here. Other side. Switching and taking a deep breath. So as quiet as you can be as you fly through the air like an airplane. Oh. <laughs> And then shifting back down, hands to the right. Mountain pose while we're here. And you stand just like this. And mountain pose. Let's take our right foot back. Can you go out your right foot? 
Yep. <laughs> We're gonna step right foot back. Warrior two position. So the back foot comes parallel to the back of the mat. Yep. Front knee is bent deeply, and we're going to take the hands out. Take a look over the middle finger of the front hand. We're going to straighten the leg. We're going to bend the leg. We're going to straighten the leg. We're going to bend the leg. We're going to take that hand palm up and pull it back. And we're going to come all the way down and step the right foot up. And ragdoll. Just let yourself hang. Deep breath. Yeah, you can shift side to side if that feels good. We're going to roll it back up to stand. Excellent. Hands to the heart. Stepping the left foot back. Boom, warrior two. Nice. Okay, so parallel. So you're going to turn your arms the other way. So you're going to turn away from me with your arms. Yep. Bend the front knee. Excellent. Press into the outer blade of the back foot. Take the gaze out over the right middle finger. Then we're going to straighten that front leg. And deepen. And straighten. <laughs> oh, and deepen. Take the palm up. We're going to pull it back all the way to your edge. This time we're going to come all the way down. Step back, plank position. Drop the knee. Child's pose. Relaxing back, brow to the floor. Boom. Let's rest. Let it all go. I'm going to straighten that out. And then, we're going to walk the hands back up so you come to sit on your heels. Heroes pose right here. Just let your eyes close. Let's take a deep breath in, nice and relaxed. All right, so there's a basic introduction to some postures. And now, we're going to do a little story and use our imagination. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So let's come back up toward the front of the mat. And we're going to sit cross-legged. So find a comfortable cross-legged, crisscross applesauce kind of seat here. Well, you, you, no dancing because we're going to be statues. So what I'd like you to do is imagine. Ooh, that's quite, <laughs> that's quite a sculpture. Okay, so we're going to imagine that we are stone statues that have been sitting in the woods for longer than anyone can remember. We're going to take our hands to our knees, let our shoulders relax, let our whole back be open, be as still as possible. So we'll have to breathe a little bit here, but we're just pretending that we're made of stone. Now one day, we're sitting around, made of stone. A magical wind comes blowing through the trees. And as the statues feel this wind hit their statue faces, their eyes magically open. And so for the first time, these statues can see. And so they look in front of them and they go, <gasps> deep breath. They draw breath into their lungs for the first time because they're coming to life. And they take a deep breath in. <gasps> and then they want to see what's over their shoulders. They look over their shoulder. What? It's a deer. Oh, hi, deer. Whoa. It's a really big deer. Okay, they will <laughs> inhale back to center. And looking, exhale. Looking over the other shoulder. What do they see? I see a pond with some fish in it. Oh, cool. I see some crows over there. They're kind of noisy. I also hear them. We're going to inhale back to center. And then the statues feel a sudden antsiness through their body. And so they start to lift their stone arms up toward the sky. Very heavy. Oh, it takes a lot of work, but it also feels really good. And then they become too heavy, so they just fall forward. Okay, but the statues are not defeated, so they're going to walk their hands back up. And they're going to try it again. And this time, they reach up, and they're feeling a little bit stronger. And they take a look up to the sky, and they go, oh, birds. Birds, wind in trees, and so this time 
they're going to fall a little softer forward, taking the hands down, shifting their weight because these statues want to explore, so they're going to press their way up to their hands and knees. Do you think they should crawl? They probably crawl before they walk, right? And they're going to start to crawl. So they start to crawl around, looking at the ground, looking at the rocks, looking around at everything that is brand new to them, looking at each other. And they're like, whoa. <laughs> and then they are pretty sure they can tuck their toes under and shift their weight back and take their feet to the ground and begin to stand. So they have never stood up before. Can you imagine how it feels to suddenly be able to shift your weight onto one foot and walk? So you're heavy, you're a little stiff, you're made of stone, but you can walk. And then the statues are like, whoa, now this feels pretty good. So they start to go a little bit faster. Be careful of the ceiling, but we're going to go a little bit faster. And then they try, whoa, they can like hop a little bit, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they can dance. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, this magical wind just doesn't last forever, which is a little sad because the statues are kind of having the time of their very, very long lives here. So slowly, 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 the statues, as the swim dies down, start to lose their ability to move. And they come back into their seats, and their hands drift down to their knees, and they look at each other, and they smile. And their eyes close. They are statues again. All right, so welcome back. Thank you for playing statues with us. So before we go today, we're just going to do this, this quick class for you today. Hopefully you had fun and got moving, got some ideas, <laughs> feel like you've got some virtual hangout time, which is pretty awesome. So we want to do a project that is absolutely optional, but if any of you like to play with Legos, Sage is pretty fond of Legos and he does a lot of projects. So what he wants to do is offer a Lego challenge. So he's going to show you a little build that he made and he, if you want to participate in this, I'm going to let Sage explain it a little bit, but you can post a picture of your Lego build in the comments and then we will, we will write you back. Sage, do you want to show them? Okay. So I'm going to go back here and make sure that they can see. So, and you, you bring it a little closer. Okay, so the challenge of this week is to make any random carnival stand. Okay, as, bring it a little closer than that. As you can there see, you go. I have made the one where you squirt water into their mouths, and then the balloons top at, pop at top. So at this top. is one of the games that you would play at a carnival. Yes, and anybody can do anything. You can have like a cup throwing one, any random one. So it can be a game. What else is at a carnival? Like a ride? You can make a little tiny roller coaster. Maybe that would be hard, but they could try that. Or like, you know, a water slide or something like that. And if you guys are wondering why I didn't put balloons up here, there's barely any Lego balloons. I guess Lego balloons and are rare. I guess it's hard to even put balloons on top of their heads. All right, so if you want to play our Lego challenge, take a picture of your Lego build, put it in our comments, we'll write you back. And so let's move this aside. Okay, we're going to come back into our seat. Cross our legs. Let's take a deep breath in, lift our hands overhead. Let's take hands to the heart. Okay, deep breath in to Om. Ready? Deep breath in. Om. Oh. Look at each other and say, Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you're all well. We'll see you next week. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll have Sage maybe once a week for a kid's class. Bye. See you later.